Okay, Nicole says, question, how many dates would it be considered to be more committed relationship? How many dates would it would it be considered to be a more committed relationship? That's an interesting and great question. All right, so every let's so this is first where you have to decide what does commitment look like for you? What does commitment look like for you? Now, for those who know me, I, I share what I'm seeking in a relationship, and I invite you all to do the same. I'm going to recite what I'm seeking in a relationship because this develops your standard. What is your standard? So my standard is I'm looking for a relationship where we spend three or four days and nights a week together doing shared activities, hobbies, mutual interests, spending time with family and friends, traveling together, teamwork building skills, both in our personal and our professional life, intimacy, both physical and emotional intimacy, that leads to either moving in together or getting married. That's what I would like my relationship to look like. Now, let me be clear. That's not what I'm seeking on the first, second, or third date, okay? <laughs> That's what I want in the form of relationship. Dating, the purpose of dating is to vet the other person to decide if you want to be in relationship with them. I better repeat that. Purpose of dating is a vetting process to decide if you want to be in a relationship with them. So how many dates does it take to decide if you want to be in relationship with them? How many dates does it take before you decide you want to be in a relationship with them? For some people, it could be as early as three or four dates to explore a relationship. For some people, it could be more. It could be 10 dates. For some people, it could be a few months. For some people, it could be six or seven months before they want to explore a relationship. First, you have to decide what is it you want in a relationship. I just shared with you my standard. So if someone can't meet that standard, I don't invest in dating someone who's only available once every other week because they're rate, for example, they might be raising children or they might have a demanding job. It just doesn't fit into the lifestyle I have for myself. So I invite you to come up with your standard. Your boundary then is what's okay or what's not okay for you. Ultimately, you got to decide what does commitment look like for you. Now, to me, commitment starts with the agreement of monogamy and exclusivity. I'm going to repeat that, monogamy and exclusivity. So to me, if we're going to have regular sex together, I would prefer it to be monogamous. Let me repeat that. If we're going to have regular sex together, I would prefer it to be monogamous. And if we decided to have regular sex together, I also, for me, I want to be exclusive with that person, meaning I don't want to be dating other people. And if they feel the need to date other people, then that then that crosses one of my boundaries. Because if I'm, I wouldn't want someone to do something. Let me, how do I say this properly? If not, I'm not saying someone has to not stop dating other people, but if I'm going to agree to stop exploring the idea, exploring, you see, if again, if you're exploring a relationship with one person, but you're saying, no, I need to date other people so to keep my options open, when you've decided you want to explore a relationship, to me, that's the agreement of being exclusive together. And that's really the first stage of commitment. And roughly these days, it takes about 100 hours of face-to-face -face time, 100 hours of face-to-face -face time to really get to know a person at stage one. So if you've seen each other once or twice a week over the course of about six to eight weeks, you're probably going to accumulate close to 100 hours of face-to-face -face time. And hopefully you've asked really good questions to determine if you're compatible. You've asked really good questions to see if your lifestyles are blendable. You've asked even better questions to determine if they're emotionally mature. And at that point, you may want to explore a committed relationship. Now, that's the way I operate. Everybody has to decide for themselves what that means to them. The reality is, is most people today are dating very casually without any intentionality. I repeat that, they're dating casually without any intentionality. And I think this is one of the reasons why we're seeing this proliferation of starts and stops, starts and stops, starts and stops, to relationships that take off like a rocket and then crash down to earth because they run out of gas, because there's a lack of intentionality. And it's because many of you, especially women, hyper-focus on the idea that men are the leaders of relationship and all you have to do is sit back in your feminine energy and everything will just magically work out because he'll claim you. You know, like really, folks, a relationship is a two-lane street. It requires mutual effort. 
to have any chance for success. Yes, they're the exceptions to the rules, but the problem with the one up, one down dynamic, meaning the men are in charge of the relationship and you're the follower, is that you're basically at his beck and call of how he wants to do things. And if you're not on the same page, that's gonna create a lot of drama. And quite frankly, do you want a man in charge of your relationship destiny? God, I hope not. I want. I hope everybody here wants to be in charge of their own relationship destiny. Folks, if when the number one search term for women is why are men commitment phobic, why do men ghost, why do men disappear, maybe that tells you you don't want to give the job to the, to the demographic <laughs> that tends to be the one that doesn't want, I'm not saying men don't want relationship, but if they're struggling with it, I invite you to be in charge of your relationship destiny. So to come back to your answer, your question, when does commitment happen? You have to decide that for yourself. I've just laid it out to you how I operate. And my hope is by what I shared, you might get some insight in coming up with your own answers. Are you willing to come up with your own answers? If you have, please post a comment below. I'd really appreciate it. And if you need some help in learning how to ask those questions, yes, schedule that free discovery call with me to see if working with a coach is right for you. It's in the link below. All right, great question. I want to thank you so much, um, Nicole, for that question.